Hi. So, Indian fintechs. Before starting, I would say I'm proud uh, of the Indian fintechs and Indian uh, uh, Indian technology service providers. We are uh, the world leaders in these technologies. So, uh, let's understand what is a, a payment aggregator. Uh, and, and this would be the first uh, video in the series. So, uh, let's say the Mm, uh, let's say you want to make a, a payment to someone okay so what you do is you go to your net banking and uh, you add them as beneficiary uh, and then you uh, do an IMPS or uh, or in case of UPI you just put in the UPI address and you make a transaction so that's a normal flow but what if uh, what if you may uh, if you want to make a payout or if you may, if you want to make a payment to two lakh people in one go right so there comes the role of a payment aggregator now uh, going uh, i mean there are many definitions of payment aggregators but uh, this is a very simplified version uh, putting uh, uh, the operations so on the right if you see these are the uh, uh, some of the payment aggregators uh, razor pay razor pay has got a license from reserve bank of india razor pay cash free popay easbus and if you can see the uh, uh, notification on the below of, uh, slide, these are the uh, regulations that are uh, being given by Reserve Bank for payment aggregators. Also uh, to note that payment aggregator is different from payment gateway. In the sense, payment gateway doesn't hold fund. Uh, payment aggregator will hold fund on behalf of the merchant. So aggregator means they aggregate funds. I mean, uh, putting it simple. So. Uh, how does it work? So uh, let's understand the concept of a virtual account first. So virtual account, it's 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 a terminology uh, that is being used. It's not like uh, it doesn't have a bank account. So virtual account means uh, there will be a virtual identifier given to each merchant. Now, what do you mean by merchant? Uh, let's say I go to a payment aggregator and I say that I need your uh, services. So they will say what kind of service you need. So one service they provide is that is a collection service other parts, uh, service they provide is, is the dispersal service. So in collection service, what happens is uh, you collect the money from thousands of your customers and at end of the day, you will get it, get all the money aggregated in your account in the form of settlement. So that is the first uh, service given by uh, as a collection service. Second service is pain uh, uh, service. I mean, we, we can overlap that. And second service is the disbursal service so you need you say that i need to uh, transfer the money to uh, thousands of uh, accounts so you load the money inside the virtual account of the payment aggregator uh, that is provided to you and then just give them the account number ifsc code they will help you disperse the money to lakhs of your customers now interestingly the node uh, so you the bank uh, has to have a nodal account uh, so uh, let's say if razor pay wants to run a payment aggregator business he will go to yes bank or icic bank and say that i need a nodal account now nodal account will be a master account which will hold money on behalf of all the merchants also merchant transaction will be uh, processed through this nodal account only and the nodal account provider will have no visibility on for what purpose the merchant is doing the transaction. It can only see lacks of money coming in and lack of money going outside. But the visibility or the idea of uh, what the merchant is doing will only be with the merchant and not with the uh, banks. Though there are some yearly audits uh, happening for uh, this uh, particular merchant uh, uh, onboarding. But in general, uh, since thousands of merchants are onboarded by a payment aggregator so large amount comes inside the nodal account and it goes outside so uh, the bank for say does not have uh, that clear visibility on what is happening inside the uh, payment aggregator or uh, merchant accounts and uh, let's make it more clear so this is an example uh, so let's say you take a ride and inside your ride uh, you uh, pay the money to uh, ola through online uh, method. So now what happens is the driver driver will not get the fund immediately. So till the name driver doesn't get the funds, uh, the money will lie with the payment aggregator. So now how does it work is, let's say one lakh people have taken a ride. So one, the money of one lakh people will be uh, with Ola. 
for some time. Now, Ola himself again will have an account in a uh, payment aggregator, uh, 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 a virtual account. So temporarily, the money will be with uh, uh, the payment aggregator. And then when Ola says, okay, now make a payment to the uh, drivers. So then the payment aggregator will send all the money um, uh, to different, different drivers. Same happens with Zomato. Let's say Zomato has some lack restaurants. So when you pay for food to Zomato, uh, it it uh, the money will get aggregated in uh, Zomato's virtual account, and then when he clicks on uh, payout or when there is a settlement, so the money will go to the restaurant owner's account. And how does it look like in the bank statement? If you can see here in the description field, whenever you get a money uh, inside your bank account uh, using uh, uh, payment aggregator, it will show the name of payment aggregator. So here it's an IMPS uh, uh, payout transaction or settlement transaction uh, from Bharat Pay. So we can see that, uh, okay, uh, uh, the funds are received and um, the payment aggregator's name is visible in the, uh, in the uh, description of the transaction. So this is the utility and this is um, uh, all about the uh, uh, payment aggregators. Yeah, thank you.